to another episode, of, or should I say, issue of the Zeno Chat Gazette, our news-focused episode. Um, I am one of your hosts, Tyler, along with Justin. Hello. And we've got a few guests with us today to talk about the latest Zeno and Monosoft news. First up, we got Mary. Hello. We got Anthony. What's up? And we got Nick. This just in. Uh, I got nothing. On to you. <laughs> thank, thank you for the report. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, we got a lot of news to talk about today. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are getting fed. Um, I did too much. My wallet is crying. <laughs> yes, our wallets are crying. <laughs> so we'll start off with our usual uh, figure corner. Um, so recently we got a look at the Mio Figma figurine and uh, Tyler, if you're smart, you'll put a picture in the video right here. If you're smart, Tyler, edit it in. <laughs> Tyler, edit it in. But only if you're smart. Only if I'm smart. So, uh, to it live. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do you guys think about the Mio figure? I think it looks um, good. I'll be Sorry. the first to say, pretty poggers. Yeah, it, it's it's fine. I'm waiting for the scale figure, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm it's... more of a scale figure myself. But I think it's cool that Xenoblade is getting a bit of attention, a bit <laughs> more attention in the more affordable figures as well. <laughs> Although the figures are still kind of expensive, but like at least it's not like the price of a scale figure, so more people can get it. It gives me hope for more variety of figures going forward for sure. Yeah, um, for sure. I'm I'm probably going to go more for the scale figure myself. Uh but I'm very glad. I'm going to look at this one too. I might end up getting this one. I think I just got some figmas in uh for Valentine's Day. Betsy Betsy got some figmas for us and I want to say it was Sans and Papyrus. I think those are figmas, but um they're really adorable. And I love them. Is it the chibi ones or is it the full body ones? I, I, it, it's are they like, Nendoroids? If it's the chibi, I don't know. I, I wanted it. I thought they were Nendoroids, but then the box looked really different than all the other Nendoroids I have. But so does I'm it not say sure. Nendoroid because they did just, change the boxes on an Nendoroid. Oh, they did. Then they're probably then. Never mind. They're probably Nendoroids then. Yeah. Well, the boxes are changed from the that same much. They just too. shrink them a bit, mostly. As you could tell, I'm very up to date on all of my Japanese figurine terminology i mean it's also okay. should say nendoroid on the box yeah let me uh let me, I, they're, they're not too far from me let me go, gonna, let me go take a look. he's gonna actually get up to get go uh, oh i have well, well, like one figma and that's telos that's yeah i have i think two figmas off the top of my head i know i have the um link from a link between worlds which is actually a really cool one and i also have the kazuma kiryu one which I actually am not a huge fan of, funny enough. Oh, yeah. That's... I have a few Figmas, oh, cool but I do that. have uh, Cosmos and Telos. So I had to confirm this because I watch the Good Smile site pretty regularly, but I'm pretty sure they've only released Nindoroids of Sans and Papyrus. That's what I was saying. Like I don't I recall just, them I ever being a Figma. I even put... Sans in a search, and it just came up with the Nendoroids. So if I'm it's pretty sure smile, he got the Nendoroids. Yeah, if it's Good Smile, he got the Nendos. Um, I'm almost certain. <laughs> As for me, I have one Figma, and it's not any particular character. I just saw one that was on sale, and it was uh, one that I had been eyeing for a while. It was like Falslander Ronin, I believe. But it's yeah. just like based on a character design, and it's a, it's just a, a samurai, a high tech samurai girl. It's pretty cool. Anyway. All right, oh, I am right. back, and I can confirm I like they it. are indeed Nendoroids. But here's my question: What are popos or papoos or p o p o u's? Are those figmas? And uh, those are you mean uh, pop ups? Those no, are... not. I mean, maybe I, pop up parade. Like, maybe like pop up parade. Yeah, yeah, oh, pop up pretty... parade. Because it's a figure of Edelgard and and uh, Felix from those, Three. Yeah, so like pop up parades. Or... Economy yeah, go on, figurine. These are more like a sort of economy figurine that are statues, but 
they're like they sell for much cheaper than say a huge scale figure with tons of details. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it's honestly, like in the economy line. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest, Pop Up Parade, they've come a long way for a while. They have. For yeah, a while they were giving they were really showing good. figures that looked fairly like in some like they would look mostly on model, but then you get like the face, like the painting on the face and stuff would be a little wonky looking. Nowadays, I, I'd see if if I see one that of something that I'm like, oh yeah, I love that character, and it's like in my budget because like they, which is a lot more often because they're a lot cheaper. I'm like, yeah, I'm going for it. Yeah, like they, they may not have the best pose. The forty-ish dollars mark. Yeah, they're about forty bucks. Yeah, so and like it, they're a lot more affordable and very nice. They are actually quite nice. I've I've yeah. gotten a couple, and they're they've they've been really good lately. Yeah, I have. I'm not sure if they were pop parades, but they were like of similar lines that are. I think they might be pop parades, but I do have digital figures that are in those kind of figurines that are a bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. I mean, speaking of pop up parades in the same uh, in the same like exhibition where they showed the Mio, they showed a pop up parade of Gurren Lagann, and it oh. looks amazing. Actually, I'm gonna need to double check that. I think I missed it. Oh yeah, it looks really really I good. Really like Gurren Lagann. Like they did they did the robot. You got Simon like when he's wow. older, and you also have Viral as well. And all three of them look. Absolutely amazing! Oh, in the new announcements there was, yes, yeah, yeah, in the same announcements that they put Mio in, uh, they also showed the sculpts for those. I might have to get that V roll. Pop up parades, they look really good. I don't have that many, but but I've seen a lot of them, and yeah, they're really really cool figures. They're just getting better and better and better. Yeah, and I just hope uh, my only concern is that like I hope that you know as these are getting more and more detailed, the prices start to good too crazy with them because it's I, I don't want this to be one of those things where now we're saying oh yeah it's great because they're affordable and then in like a couple years all of a sudden they're like 80 90 dollar figures because that, yeah. that's gonna suck for yeah, sure if that happens great. then how much are the actual like figures gonna cost at that point also how many lines does good smile have at this point like they've got nendoroids they've got the full you know scale they're figures like- I mean, They're like the top brand of like figurine sculpting. <laughs> a lot of companies do have a good few labels under them, but Good Smile definitely has a lot, especially now because I think Nendoroids kind of blew up yeah. like more than usual because they started getting deals with like a lot of even like a lot of Western stuff like Marvel superheroes and various things like that, and uh, they they're com- becoming like the pop they're becoming like the quality version of a pop figure in my opinion (laughs) so yeah like they they have a ton of lines like before it was just like from what i remember anyway they had just like a few under them i remember years ago whenever i first started started ordering some of their stuff it was like nendoroids like the scale um I think there was like the wonderful hobby life and then like Max Factory stuff. I think yeah. was under them. Um, yeah, I remember a line that was like Parfum, but I don't know if they do those much anymore. Yeah, I haven't seen the Parfums in a in a while, and I know Parfum now they everywhere. also have the um, they have Moe Droid, which is like their model kit line. Oh, Mo- yeah, oh, yeah, I, I thought it was Moe Droid. They, they oh, Mo- maybe it's Moe Droid. Yeah. Yeah, Motoroid, Moid, however you say it. Yeah, oh, Motoroid, Motoroid. That's, yeah, that's yeah, I was thinking of yeah, their, um, their uh, Trails robot. <laughs> but I, I said, almost, I'm like, oh, so many. They, they debuted that line not as long ago. It was only a couple, it was only like, I want to say four ish years ago. It, it was a more like, recent line. Yeah, because yeah. I remember like whenever they first debuted their first ones and they had like, I think Mazinger was one of them, and I I, yeah. I think it was around the time Darling and the Frogs was coming out, and I think they were going to do like a Strelitzia from that. But yeah. Okay. Well, that's the Mio figure. Uh, <laughs> all about Mio. <laughs> yeah, all about Mio, right? All about Mio. I guess we could. Well, we could there's, talk about the, the other, other figures, figures first. Yeah. Uh, so. so um yeah so mio got a figure right and then as far as other blade merch before we get to the other figures because there's plenty of other figures to actually talk about today oh yeah, yeah. um but... speaking of zeno blade we'll keep it with that there are some new zeno blade acrylic 
figures or acrylic standees, whatever you want to call them. Those are up for pre-order on Ami Ami right now. Like at first they just did the main cast, but now we got some of the heroes like Eno, Segiri, Fiona, Kamaravi, Ethel, and Riku and Manana. So yeah. you can get all of those. They're about 13 bucks USD, I think. And awesome. Oh. That, and they also have these two keychains. You can get the Noah sword as a keychain, and they are doing a reprint, it looks, of the Monado that they did when Definitive Edition came out. Nice. Yeah. I was going to say, if you still want to get the original cast, like the the original six from Xenoblade 3, it looks like orders are closed on Omni yeah. Omni for those already. Uh, orders well, are, in fact, closed. Like, I don't, I don't guess that's going to be an ongoing thing. Mm-hmm. Since we're, and, we're going with Zillow Blade, there's also yeah, um, some pre-owned figurines on stock right now on Ami Ami of pretty much all the big scale figures. Um, and Siren is also on sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we still don't have a release date on, on Ania, do we? Uh, I believe. Uh, it's like, well, it we says June. June yeah, or... so it says June. Like, oh. Yeah. All figurines, it's always like they will pitch for a month, but you'll never have an exact date. Mm-hmm. So it's in June. For, so for now, fairly soon, still. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which I can't wait for Nia. That figure yeah. looks so good. Me too. It My looks wallet good. is the one that's gonna cry though, but uh, I I cannot wait to have her. <laughs> I wish I had gone for it. I I almost did, and I I decided I needed to both save my money and yeah. Stuff. I mean, you could always check like around the months, the month where she releases. You can yeah, always check because that. there's often like still stocks after release because people will cancel last minute. Because they yeah. realize, oh, I don't have the money for this, and they cancel, and then mm-hmm. there's stocks. So, I'm, you, I'm you, waiting you could, for the version. Like, if of... you have money in June and like you want to check if it's there, like go for yeah. it. Yeah, waiting for the version of her riding Dromark in the other outfit. Oh, oh yeah, that would be that would be so would be a... nice. I would love <laughs> that. <laughs> that would be so adorable. adorable. E. Yeah, I completely forgot to pre-order Nia for some reason. <laughs> so when it, when she comes out, I will be looking at Ami Ami and all the right stuff and good smile and seeing if I can pick one up. Yeah. Also, um, even though this particular section of the Zeno universe doesn't have any new figures, I should, it's worth mentioning that there's a couple of Zeno soccer figures up on Ami Ami pre-owned if you would like. Uh, there's a really, really cool looking one eight scale Telos figure. Yeah, it's an altar. An altar is a good brand. Like I used to buy a crap ton of altar figures before, yeah. and I I can say it's quality. There's two <laughs> altar figures. There's that one, and there's also the one six scale of a swimsuit Telos, which is also looking pretty nice. And other than that, there's also the altar Cosmo swimsuit for pre-order as well and the max factory cosmos version 4 figma yeah these are all the pre-owned ones right yeah these are pre-owned but yeah i mean they look great like even the telos one that says that the item is is uh the item is a a, condition, so. just a box that's a bit damaged be right back guys okay so well, that's um, pretty pretty sick well this uh fits because he hasn't played this so let's move on to the big xenogears 25th anniversary news mm-hmm. um and we got, going crazy. <laughs> yeah we got a bunch of new figures announced for that which is always awesome always welcome um so there um i didn't write it on the doc but one of them is of course going to be bart He's going to get his own figure. Yes. Yeah, there's a prototype going around. Like, it's not yet available for pre-orders, but Mm -hmm. we saw pictures of a prototype, so that means it's coming. Yes, he looks Um, great. But uh, who is available for pre-order is uh, Maria and Choo Choo. Oh, man, you can move Choo Choo's legs. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, they've all got joints. (laughs) Holy crap, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to cop this, Maria. Like I, I mean, I, <laughs> I like Maria, but she's probably not one of my favorites. 
Um, She's not for me, but I have okay. I have uh, Faye and Ellie and the Veltal, so I'm like, I should. Yeah, I didn't get to Faye and Ellie, but that's mostly because I'm I'm not a huge fan of how Square does its uh, joints of like they're the not great. Yeah. Like, they're often very weak and very the robots cheap. Are great, the robots the, are amazing. The robots, the robots look amazing, and I have ordered them all. <laughs> My wallet shall die. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they also uh, pre-orders are up for uh, Big Ol' Side Zen. I don't know if I said that right, but uh, yeah, yeah. And there's a model kit series two, and I, I believe the series one also had. Um, let me double check. I think yeah, they have a reprint. One was also ha- having a reprint, so people yes. can pre-order if they missed it before, which is yes, cool. it's up uh, on Ami Ami to pre-order. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Model Kit 2 um, has Crescens and uh, Rin Mazoa and I don't remember who else. Uh, the, the, I think it's the uh, ultimate form of... Uh, oh, Xenogears? Uh, uh, oh, I thought it was Xenogears. Yeah. 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 I just yeah, put yeah, up the name. I was like, was it, was it the name Xenogears? Was it name Omega something? Or I, like, I didn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> is Zeno Gears and is there a fourth one in there or is that just no it's just three, three but I think well, it's, it's because the one. the third one is bigger gotcha I th- I think the Zeno Gears is bigger than the other two that's why oh and um I should mention something about uh Sabzen or Sebzen however you say it so that is a structure arts plus which yeah so that one is already painted. pre-painted yeah it's pre-painted <gasps> uh... it's pre I think is that one pre-assembled or is it like you still, oh, that's have, the, to still have to assemble it. it? It's just the parts are painted already. Yeah. I kind of wish the... the other ones were also pre-painted, yeah, but I, gonna say, uh, I guess I'm going to struggle with that. Is that the same brand as the Welltall and the... Uh, it is. Oh it's all God. Square Enix. Or Square Enix well, does its own stuff. Uh, no. I don't think Welltall Id was a... Um, Welltall Id was not a, was not a model kit. No, it was oh, not. Oh, okay, it. okay. It's on my show for that. So it's, what, what it's basically what it is is right Square's model kits. Their line is called the Structure Arts. Yeah. And uh, okay. the the ones that we have already, those are just the regular Structure Arts. Those aren't painted. Sebzen is a Structure Arts Plus. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I still haven't put together. Uh, the first I haven't put together you a and single, me both a single one of <laughs> them. Like, I'm just have... like Dude, I, I look I've at had my siren for gunpla. how many years now. Well, I also I have look at my us... I started yeah. going through them, but I have so many to build. And siren is also in that pile, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm I'm in that hole for a while. So I'm <laughs> saving siren for when I get a good display case. I think because like that's such a big one. That, like, I don't want to move that thing. Like, okay, no. I've got my scale. I built that years ago at this point, and that thing has moved around a lot. It's not exactly in the best of shape. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah I, I want to wait for Siren to, for me to be, have, like, a really nice case to just put it in so I can actually mm-hmm. keep it safe. That's the biggest reason for me as well. Like, I've got a good case, but I've got so much other stuff in it. And also, it looks even bigger than some of the space like i've got a fairly decent sized case but it's mostly like a vertical one and it's like i don't know that's the siren looks pretty wide to me so i've been kind of afraid. yeah it's it's a big box yeah but uh speaking of the xenogears model kits uh if you missed out on it the first time you can get volume one right now they're reprinting it so now's the time to check it out yeah. And I think that's everything in terms of figures. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we got everything. All right, yeah. so let's move on lot. to the games, yes. which uh, obviously the the big one is Xenoblade Three DLC. But before we get to Xenoblade Three DLC, let's talk about another Monolith game that got announced for the Nintendo Switch. It's getting a remaster, uh, Batsin Kaitos HD, which is one really really cool. Those. Yeah. One and two. Yeah. So that's that's really lovely because those are two games that I used to see in stores and I'd see it in magazines and I'd always always curious about it. Yeah. But I just never really gave it a chance, unfortunately. 
but I really want to try it now. Now that's going to be on the Switch. I'm like super excited because I've listened to music from from these games. Oh and my gosh, the soundtrack sounds amazing. Yeah. It's Toy Soccer remember- was best soundtrack ever. I yeah, I remember seeing um, I, I remember seeing a lot of screenshots and things like that of this. I was a that was my that was the GameCube era, which was a very selective era for me in video games. I also had yeah. not gotten into RPGs yet, super like big. I, 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 there were a few I liked. I think sure. at the time I tried it and I got turned off by the the can recording <laughs> <laughs> voice acting. Yeah. yeah, but I was so like. I was. I'm still curious about it, and I think I will. I will get the HD remaster to give it a second chance, and like, you know, actually play it because the story did look really interesting. My biggest thing was I always saw it in like Nintendo Power and stuff, and I was like, oh man, this game looks insane. I really want it, but I couldn't afford to get everything that I wanted, and that just didn't yeah. make the, the list. Yeah, that's me. totally fair. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I was uh. I was fresh off of Xenosaga episode one, and I remember seeing ads to Bot and Kaitos, and I was like, by the creators of Xenosaga. I'm like, oh, you, you have me sold right there. Um, <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I played the first one. Um, I really enjoyed it, except the, the voice acting was really bad, and it definitely <laughs> left up. It sounds like they they took some some tubes and spoke through them the whole it, time. <laughs> it's, it's bad. But then Origins, the prequel is so good it, it like the, the game overall is a huge improvement because it uh, made some yeah. really good um improvements to the battle system but also the voice acting itself is was actually really good too nice. um so that's kind of the i guess good and bad thing about this hd collection because bandai namco did say that it will only be the japanese dub yeah um, but they so, might have lost the files of the original uh stuff and they know the recording of the first one is kind of well bad, yeah so i did i was wondering if maybe it was they would an probably or, have oh. to recast everyone and they probably didn't want to <laughs> they pay accidentally much rel- erase the voice acting from the answering machine <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was wondering if it was like maybe an all or nothing thing so like oh yeah but also i know um it was nintendo that themselves that published origins and not bandai namco so i don't know if that also yeah. played a factor in i guess it. it's around the time where they they kind of branched maybe to nintendo like i'm not exactly sure at what time in the timeline they, they did branch completely to nintendo it, it was i think it was still before that but it was close to when nintendo bought those yeah major sh- majority shares but origins yes is excellent and i i'm excited for this hd collection um, regardless of the voice acting, because I, I, I definitely want to try out the first game and see how it is with the original Japanese voice acting. Same. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. And they uh, have in general, some... I think that they just need to remaster a lot of GameCube games because I, mm-hmm. the more people I talk to, the more I realize how many people miss that miss that system entirely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. And like hey, even me, like I only got to play some GameCube games later when I got my Wii that could read GameCube. Because I didn't have a Nintendo mm-hmm. system so much before that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I started getting Nintendo system when I had a job and could afford a system myself. <laughs> and hey, who knows if this <laughs> does well. Xenosaga Remaster? Mm-hmm. I know, Maybe. right? We're going to ride that Hopium train. <laughs> yep, they're getting the clown makeup ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, th- I'm excited for it. We'll see how it comes out. Hopefully, it's a good port. Hopefully, it plays well. Mm-hmm. I hope so and, too. Yeah, it'll, it'll be nice. So, we're going to get to two new releases this week. One of them is a game, and the other one is DLC. Although, technically, the reason this game relates to Zeno is a DLC, but The Arch Rhythm Final Bar Line just came out. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That's going to get some Zeno Gears DLC down the line i believe that's wave three of the dlc for that game yeah so there's gonna be three whole songs from xeno gears lovely (laughs) so yeah uh 
be on the lookout for that. Hopefully it'll be pretty cool. It'd be nice if like you can get like Faye and Ellie as characters. I think that'd be kind of cute. I don't know if they'll do that. Yeah, I can I, I can see be... them. I can see them in my mind's eye in that style. I can see them like that, yeah. I mean right. brave brave Exvius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just make it have, a, have any of you played the 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 final bar line, like or like the demo yet? I, I, I did not play the new Any one, no, but yeah. I did play some pre the the previous one on the 3ds. So one thing I've seen a lot of people complain about with it is that it doesn't have the touchscreen controls that the, the 3ds version had. <sighs> My brother oh, was complaining no. about that too, and um, it plays kind of like Groove Coaster, but just yeah. differently enough that it throws me off still. So like when yeah. I was playing the demo, some of those songs really give you a workout, like. Anything above expert mode for me, I'm just like, how do I do this? It's like, I, there's been some songs I tried, and I could like feel that I am going to like destroy my fingers playing. <laughs> so I've been very hesitant to pick this up, and it's sad because this is actually a game that I I was really excited for personally, mm-hmm. and I know I can get through the songs on expert. It, they're mostly fine. It's when I go above that that I'm kind of like, don't know if I'll be able to, how much miles I'll get from this, but um, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still gonna play the demo a little bit more. I probably don't know the demo to try it myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, I recommend it. I, I recommend checking out the demo. It, you get 30 songs in the demo in like 30, 30? characters. Yeah, that's, oh, that's insane. It's it's a very generous demo. Like, you all, I, I, I'm just saying, like, if you guys are interested in theater them, just download the demo. There's a lot of content for you to enjoy just from that alone. Yeah, that's definitely. crazy. Check that out. And you can transfer your progress over to the full game too. So, yeah, Which I want to awesome. pick up the demo again, see maybe I can like it some more. But yeah, I I got like really weird whiplash when I was playing this. I'm like, man, this game is like really, really, really hard. And I play Groove Coaster a lot on the Switch, and I love that game. And I could play some of those songs on the harder difficulties, not without much issue. But in theater them, I get my ass handed to me. It's crazy. Yeah, I've not played any of those games i was always like mildly interested in trying them out but this is also my first theater rhythm game because i missed them on the 3ds but, to be but honest, yeah like, from what i remember on the 3ds it just takes some time to get used to uh, the way the notes comes because like it's a bit different than some other rhythm games so it can throw throw off like your your timings because you get surprised by something sometimes that's what's happening with me because yeah. it, like I said, it's very similar to Groove Coaster that I'll play it like Groove Coaster, but just differently enough that it'll still throw me off. Yeah. But yeah, that that was three theaters um, So um, be on the lookout for the Zeno Gears DLC when that drops. I don't think I have a date for that, not at least not offhand, but I'm sure they'll announce it. Yeah, and, I don't uh, know if they gave it a, a specific date. Yeah, but anyways. We're oh. back to the other DLC that came out this week. Well, I kind of wanted to ask something about the theater rhythm thing. Actually, yeah, yeah. Fast before we moved on, did did they say what the? Because I don't, I don't remember if they showed or not. Did they say what the three songs are from Zeno? Gears? I think they did, but I forgot. Yes, they did. Um, I think oh, the battle no. team is one of them. Find... I'm not sure. Yeah, I remember I, I just found it a while back. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't have them offhand. Uh, it's fine. I just I was just curious about that, and I wasn't sure if they did or not, because I, I didn't even I didn't realize how many they had said there were going to be. All right. Well, in any case, um, we had the Nintendo Direct, which is where we heard about the Bot and Kaito's HD remasters, and also about Wave Three and Four of Xenoblade Three's DLC. So Wave Three gives us the new hero, Masha. Um, it looks like there's a couple new things like accessory crafting and the Arch Sage Gauntlet, which I haven't tried yet, but oh it God. sounds really, really, really fun. I love it. Oh, it's so fun. I was going to try it last night, and then I got sidetracked doing other stuff in the game <laughs> and never got to it. <laughs> sounds so, about right. <laughs> maybe tonight. Yeah. It looks yeah, like a ton of fun. Either. <laughs> Yeah, I was cause... waiting for it yesterday, like doing other things, and I was like, maybe it'll it'll show up before I get buzzy, and then I got buzzy and it showed up after. I was like, oh well. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I, I really want to ch- check that out because it reminds me of the uh, mode in Streets of Rage Four. That's kind of like a roguelite. That's actually a, a ton of fun too. Yeah. So. Honestly, it yeah, looks I very love the idea of like going in with one character through mm-hmm. that one mode like that. But I've yeah, not you're tried doing it like yet. a sort of campaign. Yeah, because yeah, you yeah you choose one of the six characters as your playable character. And you just go through wave after wave, and as you defeat enemies, you earn uh, basically points to spend on in between waves to either recruit other uh, heroes to your team or um, uh, boost your stats or uh, any other kind of like um, thing that'll affect battles. Um, it's it's really really fun. Um, and I, I, it's, yeah, it was more in depth than I was expecting it to be. And I, I, yeah, I'm a fan. That sounds like very cool. Yeah. I was, I was wondering exactly how they handled it, but you can like add to your team then as you yes. go. Like, yeah. Basically that's... you'll add up to the seven, which is, which is cool because you'll have a party of basically heroes plus um, your, your main protagonist, whoever you choose is one of the yeah. six. So you'll have like six hero characters on your team that you can't really do in the main mode so that's that's i thought that was really cool wait so does it let you do like the swapping to them at all uh no that is the downside because i would be super cool if they use this as like the opportunity for that but like i've gotten (sighs) killed in one of the battles and i just kind of have to watch and wait (laughs) while the others are fighting Which, uh, Eno, my gosh, she is quite the tank. Um, I never really, besides her story, after after I finished her stories, I didn't really do much with her, but she has been carrying me in this mode, and I have a new appreciation for her. So thank you, Eno. Yeah, because she's she's a type of tank that's a bit like uh, Morag, where it's like, everything misses she's an evade tank yeah yeah she's an evade tank so like she's very busted (laughs) Mm -hmm. yes she is there was times where i would everyone else was dead except her so i'm just like watching her rooting her on while she's fighting the enemy (laughs) is is great the 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 evasion rings on her (laughs) i forget which one that is and i did uh, get one of the sevens oh yeah and I recruited um, Masha. I haven't done any other follow-up quests, but she's fun. She's a fun character. I didn't even get to that because I had I had played so much of Xenoblade Three that mm. whenever I got to the the Eno stuff, I did part of it, and I I'm still like I did all the initial stuff. And I've still got a bunch of like ether to collect for her, so I've not finished her chart out or anything like I, that. I finished her thing entirely yeah, I <laughs> but it's also her. because i i like basically when i was getting close to the end of silver blade tree i was just like okay i'm gonna go through all of the story that i'm missing so i i grinded all the story and i did i ate them all like candy <laughs> after you like collect all the ether through Eno swap is there like any more story for her or is it just like because i finished her uh, quest, no it's just it's quest. just the ascension quest but the okay the the eater just raises her, her skills kind of like the poppies like, yeah that's what i was like a tiger kind of thing so yeah, it's, it, it's more so that it raises her abilities but yeah. you still need to get her to level 10 like other classes to get her ascension quest so yeah, she's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to do more of Masha or Mashes, or however you say it. Quest, quests. She's 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 an interesting character. Yeah, I think this weekend I'll do her and uh, some more story things that comes post game that I have not done yet, which I will not say. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, um. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that's it for the current DLC, yeah. Yeah, because along with this wave three, we got a sneak peek at what wave four is going to look like. The most insane fifteen seconds I have ever watched. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right for DLC at least. Yeah. 
Yeah, we uh, we get to see, uh, well, it's supposed to be a, a brand new story with a brand new uh, cast of characters. Yeah. Um, several well, brand which... new, yes. Brand and... new, yeah, we'll see. I don't yes know. and, uh, yeah. Well, that's what they <laughs> say in the description. <laughs> well, it's a different cast of characters than yeah. who we were playing different. as in late 3. Yeah. They are very reminiscent of other characters. <laughs> Yeah, yes. but but still, like you have, uh, uh, Alvis seems to have turned evil in the, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. We don't know what happened. What's happening? All right. Have, so yeah, There's you no have good uh, evil with Alvis. You have a a Shulk and the Giga Chad Rex that appeared. Giga Chad be... Rex. Giga Chad Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and they, that, they appear to be like going against all of this and then there's like this other guy that looks like Noah but also kind of looks hardcore like Faye and I'm just like Faye is that you? Faye from Are you Zero doing Gears, a peek yeah. win yet another game? <laughs> yeah. So yes. Yeah. Takes a giant bite of sandwich in the trailer. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that so, would have been, been great, though. Go ahead, Justin. That's, that's All right, just, so no. it seems like this story isn't going to be a sequel. Yeah, it because, seems to be more of a prequel. Correct. Like It looks like it involves the founders yep. in the city. Because the statues mm-hmm. are very similar to some of the characters. They're incredibly them. similar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine they have to be the founders. And because with that knowledge in mind, that makes it particularly interesting because I think the trailer that we showed, uh, we don't know when that happens in the DLC. But if we were to go by the descriptions of some of those statues in the city, we can learn a couple things. So, for instance, the character that we're all thinking is Rex, he has two eyes. And his statue specifically mentions that he lost an eye fighting the Mobius. Oh, so, the trailer is probably not so much at the end, but more no. earlier. Yeah. It, it cannot be at the end. Yeah. And also, uh, more than just that... Um, <clears throat> the character we think is Shulk is not wearing the same outfit as that statue in the city. That too. That too, yeah. In fact, Shulk is wearing the outfit of the person of House Reed and it's like it almost matches up perfectly and that person they're supposed to have a prosthetic arm. Right. Uh... They are. That's uh yeah, that's probably your Fey looking guy. <laughs> no, that's actually no, not. That's um, not okay. No, it's not actually. There's there's another person in that same statue. Oh, not saying in that same area. I like to look at the mm-hmm. the statue room again. About. Yeah, yeah, and uh, th- there's there's a lot of interesting descriptions about that. So uh, that person, they are of House Vandom. If it's if it's oh. who I think it is. Wait, which one are you talking about? The fate looking one, or yeah, if they're if they're the person I think they are, they are of House Fandom. Because I know the Shulk looking guy was like House Ortega, I think. Uh, that was House Cassine. No, that was House Ortiz. Sorry. Or Orchi. Okay, what was I thinking? What was? It? Where did I get that word? Anyway, it's been a while. I haven't read those statues. It in a has been a minute for but me it's also too. Because, like, when we read the, the description uh, at first, it was like, oh, it's just like past heroes, and like you read the description and it goes over your head. In fact, but now we now we here, saw the trailer. Right. We're like, oh yeah, it was yeah. Hold, okay, hold, yeah. hold on, hold I'm, on. I'm gonna tell you what. So I yeah. actually booted up the game, and we're gonna run through each of those statues right now. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're gonna Go do some more time. Justin. So <clears throat> the first statue. This is the one that kind of looks like Shulk. This is House Ortiz. In memory of the founder of House Ortiz and the city's liberator. A Cavesi soldier, this founder was released from the Flame Clock system by the other founders. 
and henceforth spent every last ounce of his energy for the cause, to liberate the city as one of the first Ouroboros. With surpassing skill in mechanical engineering, the founder fought not with a blade, but with a weapon of his own fabrication. He was also responsible for laying the foundations of all the mechanical systems supporting the city to this day. Following the night against Mobius, he poured the remainder of his days into rebuilding the city before finally perishing at the age of 80 years. Though how he attained that feat, despite his origins as a Kvestis soldier, remains unexplained. So that's interesting. So we know that this dude lives to about 80. He had a blade that he created, which is in line with Future Connected. Mm -hmm. And I believe we see that blade in the trailer. So, yeah. And also he was liberated from the flame clock, too. So that's that's also interesting. Now, we're going to call that person Shulk. and Because uh, that's another thing. We don't know if this is the same Shulk as before. Maybe this is a copy. I don't know. We, we, we know Takahashi. Shulk. Takahashi likes to do that nonsense. But we'll, yeah. we'll call them Shulk. Damn right now. he does. But we'll call them Shulk for now. Just, Shulk. just to make it, just to make it easier. Shulk. <laughs> just like so, when the, when the uh, yeah, other things happen with this game. But yeah, we won't mention it. <laughs> but yeah, so that Shulk is wearing this other person's uh, outfit. They are of House Reed. I've seen some people theorize this person is Dunban, but we'll see. Ooh. In memory of the founder of House Reed and the city's Libertrix. Rather than the founder herself, this statue depicts the founder's mentor figure, standing as a sign of the deep reverence and devotion she felt for her teacher. The founder's master was unconnected to her by bonds of blood, yet he raised her as would befit a child of one's own, it is said. Though of a calm and constant disposition, the sight of him on the battlefield, great red sword in hand, struck fear into many a Mobius. And though the vicious struggle against Mobius cost this ferocious warrior his right arm, the loss did nothing to diminish his desire to hone his martial arts skills every day, standing as vivid testament to his indomitable will. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And now there's this other person right here who has cat ears. So we don't know who that is. Yeah, that one didn't look like any specific character. So this is House Doyle. But I know, didn't one of them look kind of like Laura, though? A little bit? I, I maybe. Uh, maybe. I mean, she's got like kind of the short hair, but you can definitely see the cat ears, though. Yeah. Mm. So, a memory of the founder of this house, Doyle, and the city's tricks, directly descended from those who established the first original city. Her whereabouts were lost at the end's ravaging of the city of old, but upon encountering the other founders, she committed herself fully to the fight. This founder is said to have a fam familiar relation to the founder of Vandom with scant mm -hmm. accent records, suggesting they were likely brother and sister. Ooh. She fought alongside the founder of Vandom then, who was the elder of the two and brought the power of Ouroboros to completion. Said to have been bright and wise, this founder laid the cornerstones for much of the city's governance and legal system. That was so. Will? In a sense, though, huh. wasn't like yes, wasn't like a, a certain person that we meet la late game say that she was the one who made the Uroboros thing. Do you think she was there back then? <laughs> I'm trying Santa to not does, say spoodles. <laughs> Santa does have in game dialogue commenting that that founder looks like Neo, but it's probably just because the cat ears are uh, there. I'm thinking, look, I'm going to write it in chat, okay? So, I mean, it's it's interesting to think about because, like, they specifically mentioned that, like, she disappeared after and did his thing. Yeah, and that's why, like, I feel like the facts kind of matches to this, but I'm not sure. I don't guess we have to say spoilers at this point, though, right? Like, because we are, we are already talking about pretty spoilery things. Uh, we're talking about prequel stuff, not the things in the current game. Yeah, I know, but we're reading like the 
things from in the game. Yes, but it's sure. still about prequel heroes. It's not about yeah, what's in the game. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to avoid saying the names. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but there is a there is a character that does say she uh made the thing and I was I'm like yeah, it it could be that this character would have been there back then as well considering that description, but I guess we will have to wait and see. <laughs> so now we're brought to this statue, which is of House Vandom, who I'm pretty sure is that third guy in the trailer who it's talks about killing Grandad, right? It's Faye. <laughs> yes, Faye. In memory of the founder of House Vandom, the city's restorer and liberator, the original incarnation of the city was once laid to ruin by Mobius N's hand. The founder realized fully the power of Ouroboros, which is consistent with the trailer, because you look at the trailer, he, he's about to become Ouroboros. Yes. You can see his Ouroboros form very briefly, but it's there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Once victorious, he gathered the old city's people, scattered to the winds, and reestablished the city. With the city restored, he left its government in the hands of the founder of Doyle and departed on a, on a lonely expedition. No records exist of his fate thereafter. Mm. Her heirs of the Vandom's lineage only returned to the city, to the new city several centuries later. Oral tradition has it that the founder was master of the classical art of fist fighting, and the scions of House Vandom carry on the custom to this day. Mm. So fist fighting, huh? Oh, Bring back death fighting. blows. I'm well, sure. also, you know, you got to think of Monica. I don't know if Monica, because Monica's a descendant of Vandom, right? Mm -hmm. And Monica's yes. kid, what does she do? Oh, she fist fights. Fist, fist fight. Smack she things. basically took Ryu's moves. But hey, uh, but hey, that means Faye's even more like... Like, the, the, the whole Faye-looking guy and, like, martial art thing, like, Right. <laughs> what are you gonna say, Anthony? Um, I was gonna say, didn't Rock's weapon in Xenoblade Two, uh, where isn't it like not not fisticuffs, but like no, some sides. sort of short handheld thing? They were, were kind of like side. They were like short sides, right? Sides, they sides, but yeah. they were not like yeah. It was not like fist fighting, like Faye, for example. No, they were they were actual like. Blades. There were they actual weapons, yeah, like the hmm. dual weapons. The, so there were sides, yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I see what you're saying. I'm just thinking, like, it's, it's not quite the, it's not quite like a sword. It's, it's, it's kind of like getting close to that line of hand to hand combat. I mean, but, I guess, but that's that kind of feels like reaching. Like it's they're, it is, they're it's really a little cool. bit of a, I'll I'll admit it's a little bit of a reach. It's a I mean if they were like kukri or something, I would say sure. What a, yeah, but what's these, a kukri? It's like the punch dagger thing. Hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm gonna have to look that up later. Um. Yeah. But uh, Vandom. Uh, when we say Vandom's line. We're talking about Guernica's like ancestors, right? Yep. Yes. Guernica, Monica, okay. and Gondor. And uh, and and just to be clear, the character we're talking about right now is the one that looks a little bit like Noah. Yeah, they have the ponytail and you know the little. What do you call it? Is it like a little front curl? Oh, the Ahoge uh, thing. Yeah, but it's not like quite like a hoge. I guess you can call it a hoge, but also sorry, <laughs> Anthony, I told you wrong. Kukri is the is slightly different. The punch dagger is just it's just called a punch dagger. <laughs> there was something yeah. else though I was thinking of. I mean, Kukri is more like a stab as opposed to bludgeon. <laughs> it's what I said when you need your punches to stab as opposed. Oh to yeah, 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 exactly. Or push daggers. Anyway. Had to correct that. Make a good tenderization. But yes. Um, uh, anyways, this person, they fully realize the power of Ouroboros. This this part's kind of interesting. It says, the founder realized fully the power of Ouroboros. Here's before limited and fought against N, ousting him. 
So that's interesting to me. It fought so he, against who? N. Wait. N as in like old Noah? Yes. Y- yeah. Huh. See, now that's interesting to me. That's really interesting to me because I was thinking, and since all three of these guys, it's implied anyway, that all three of these characters are from uh, the before times, back when Shulk and Rex were still alive. Again, implication. I don't know how long they lived, I mean. So. Um, but... What I'm think, what I was thinking here is that like this guy is the, like the original, 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 original Noah, like, like the guy that that N and all the others are based off of, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So now I'm really wondering what the resemblance to Noah is about because it's definitely um, deliberate. This, if, if, if I think I three, have a theory for that, but it's just like. I don't know how much I can say because of like it's it still falls to very extremely late game territory. <laughs> but uh um I will write it uh if you want to talk about it, I'll dip for a few minutes. It's fine. Well, no, we don't need to. Do I, I, I thought I thought you were that No, no, we don't we don't need to get into like super heavy speculation yeah. here anyway. We're yeah, just, you know. we're just talking about yeah. the do's. But and, yeah, um, um so, um, I just want to put out a warning to everyone because there have been data mine leaks of the DLC. Yes. Yes. Um, with so uh, location <laughs> names and cutscene names. So be careful, everyone, unless you're yes. you're into that. If you're into that, just stay away from us. Yes, and um, I have already. Freak. <laughs> I haven't seen the so I haven't <laughs> seen the cutscene names, but I've seen. The names of the camps. I have two. I've and seen camps. Let me tell you, there's there's some names in there that are kind of interesting. Some eyebrow razors. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. I'm intrigued. But I'm not going to reveal gonna... them here, but thank yes. you. I'm intrigued. Do we know? I'm not gonna yeah. look do we know who we're? So, oh, sorry, Tyler. Do we no, know? Go, who we're no, actually... go on. Do we know who we're actually playing as? In the DLC, I was no. Wondering. Are we going to be playing? We we, we didn't be... see any gameplay. Yeah, huh. the most we gameplay. saw was a shot of um, an area of the game that looks like Raquel Lake from Xenoblade One, but um, also I saw a I saw a monkey. One one of the monkeys yeah, are the there. <laughs> yes, so I saw that in the distance. So that that's there. But otherwise, we didn't see any gameplay of like or who we're playing as, what the battle was like. We didn't see anything like that. It was just yeah, it was really just scene. a short mm-hmm. teaser, really, just to uh, make everyone's brain melt. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's still two more statues for me to run through. Oh, so damn, okay, go for it. Uh, yes, all right. So this next founder, this is the one that looks like Rex, or at least we're calling Rex. You get Chad Rex. Yeah. And let's see this person. This is House Cassini. In memory of the founder of House Cassini in the city's Libertrix. Much like with the founder of Reed, this statue too depicts the founder's respected mentor rather than the founder herself. The mentor boasted a robust physique, wielding two great swords at once with utmost ease and facing down Mobius. Despite the loss of one eye. In the trailer, this person, or at least somebody that looks very much like this person, is there and they have both eyes. Yes. He oh lived God. his life an unsophisticated sort, broad minded but impassioned, and is said to have aided the founders in the fight against Mobius, physically and spiritually. He was further reported to have been a free spirit whose qualities influenced the other founders still young and impressionable when the city was restored. God, that sounds a lot like Rex. <laughs> Indelible proof of his rebellious spirit can be seen time and again in the ethos of the house in generations to come. All I gotta say is if that is Rex, that one-eyed monster comment isn't gonna, isn't gonna age well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you gosh. one-eyed monster. And finally, we have House Rhodes. A soldier of Agnes. This founder's a fight to the death against the founder of Ortiz. A soldier of Kevis. Fight to the death against the founder of Ortiz. 
Huh. huh. What, 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 who does this look like, this statue? Honestly, I a lot can't, like... Oh. I can't tell who, who this looks like, but you, you know who the founder of Ortiz was, right? No, I don't. Shulk? That was a person that looks like Shulk. Yeah. So this guy fights to the death against Shulk. She. and this, Yeah. Oh, she. She <laughs> fights to the death against uh, against the, the founder of Shulk. So she. Not the founder of Shulk, but against... Yeah, no, that's what, that's what I'm, I'm sorry. I mixed my her, words up. Um, her outfit looks a lot to me like an Agnian, like like a kind of like the Troubadour outfit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me finish up what that was. So that's interesting. It's not Morag, is it? Or anyone related to Morag? No, or... it does not seem to be. That does not look like an outfit Morag would like wear. Okay. So yes. Fight to the death against the founder of Ortiz's soldier, Kevis, was interrupted by a chance meeting with other founders. Freed from the bondage of her flame clock, she joined the fight against Mobius. Although a soldier, the founder is reported to have been exceedingly gentle and kind at heart. Additionally, her skill in the healing arts greatly contributed to the development of medical science in the city in later ages. And in respect of of starting life as an Agnian soldier. She is said to have surpassed 80 years of age, though the way she achieved that remains shrouded in mystery. Hmm. She doesn't seem to have the cat ears that the other person had. Hmm. I don't see anything on her head. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's not Nia. Um... Oh, well, G. Willikers, guys, this might be a completely new character. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if at least one or more of these people are new characters. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to go back and look at these statues now because I was like, you know, during the cutscene, they they, they frame they frame these these shots of these statues. And I don't know if it was because it was like one in the morning or something like that. But uh, I, I didn't recognize any of them and then i was like oh i guess i'll find out about these ch- the, the these chums later and then i tra la 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 on my way out and uh yeah um that that never came back and now i'm now i'm about to go do the ending of the game um but yeah i uh i really <laughs> want to go back and look at these statues yeah because you, you skip like a pretty big part of the lore <laughs> yeah I don't even know I could examine them, to be honest with you. That kind of surprises me. They have giant, on the map, they have those giant, like, indicators that you can examine them. Okay, again, it was like one in the morning, (laughs) and I was about to go to bed. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Yeah, I know. You can't play video games when you're blind. It's fine. Oh, he's not blind. I know. Interesting little nuggets that it's optional, but it's, um... It is. I'm just saying they are marked if you want to go find them. Yes, so everyone, you can go go to the city and look at these statues and let us know what you think. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. wait there's one more thing here. Okay, Ooh. so there's a thing in the middle. The Ouroboros Stone's Cage. The object on display upon this plinth is the very first original Ouroboros Stone's Cage. It is important to note that initial designs for the monument are said to have included a statue of a seventh founder in its place. Mm -hmm. Next to no information remains about the seventh founder's identity, and it is possible that this is not due to a simple loss of records. Rather, historians speculate that this is the result of a conscious decision by the seventh founder. Mm. Okay, that really sounds like... uh like her friend but we will see <laughs> think it's Alice. i have one question <laughs> i have one question yeah nia is alive the the others the other founders are the other founders where the fuck are pyra and mithra we like, have no idea like here's the th- here's the thing that gets me right Xenoblade 2 tells us that we've got three core AI thingies, okay? And Pyra and Mithra, or Numa, I should say, was one of them. Malice was another. 
The third is lost. It's Alvis. Let's let's not kid ourselves. It's 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 Alvis. Um, yes, it is. And Alvis is something's clearly going on with him in the in this DLC thing, and I like the thing that's really bugging me about this is that is that we haven't seen anything of Pyra or Mithra, and part of me is wondering if if they at some point re merge into Numa and that's one of the founders and that's the missing one or something else happened to the both of them because it's actually driving me crazy well why well, they're not even being well, mentioned well here's, the here's the thing in the trailer the person we think is Rex is holding both of their swords yep but also, it's important to note that both of these swords also have different designs. So people were implying that uh, they were probably a bit like, you know, Shulk's Monado that was modified later to be his own creation thing. Mm -hmm. That it could have been that. So I mean, the the Mithra one looks pretty, pretty close. It's yeah. close, but it's slightly different. Like there's differences. It's mostly I like I mostly know because I've seen like cosplayers who made the initial swords like notice the difference detail and then I went to check I was like oh yeah there is some different details well, I did not notice at first well, everybody ages come on oh my goodness I'm just now noticing this like I'm looking at the uh, trailer and that's totally I, I, um th this person this Rex totally has the anchor shot thing yeah oh on his arm nice. yeah, yeah that's totally the anchor shot I just noticed that now <laughs> Nice. But also, I think one thing they noted, like, I need to double check just now. I think I'll reload the video real quick. If I can find it. Can I find it? There it is. Um, I'm just trying to... And let me note that the statue does not have that anchor shot. Yeah, true. But if I... Okay, one thing to note is it doesn't seem like the swords have uh, the Zohar-shaped cores on them. It's a different shape. So that's one big change. Well, to put uh, to put you at ease, Anthony, it was only a 20-second trailer, so... Yes, yes. You never know. Say. You yeah. never know. And also... Also... Let's be real here. It is very much possible that um, these statues are just red herrings and mm -hmm. in the sense that like mm -hmm. it could just be somebody completely different. And, and also designs may not always be consistent. Remember what happened yes. with Adam? Yes, yes. Yeah. I remember very clearly the, the whole thing of like using Jin's model with the hood and then it was yes. like, ta-da, it's Adam. Because they just didn't have his model it, finalized yeah, by model. that point. Yeah, no. I will go to my grave believing that Adam is Rex's great, 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 great grandpappy. Sure, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It doesn't matter, but God, the more I think about it, and like now that I see adult Rex and I'm just like, there's just something. There's just like 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 I see a lot of Adam in. Rex. You, mean, you mean it's not the hair and the eye color? It's not the yeah. It's not the hair, the eye color, the yes. fact that people literally are just like, oh, you remind me of him. I mean, yeah. Oh, and you weren't <laughs> actually born on this island. Yeah, you, you know all that stuff. Yeah, I, can, uh, nah, I think that's pretty well known to be like. Yeah, it's still just implied, but I mean, come on. They did that on purpose. Absolutely. You did, <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> but yeah, another theory is that, um, and this is one that I've seen, and it's something to think about, you know, Alvis is in the trailer, and he's holding the Monado. That's just straight up the Monado. And, you know, you see, you can see the core, I'm going to call it the core crystal, but... Uh, necklace. Yes, the necklace. And something you, it, it's possible that Albus isn't even technically being evil, and this could potentially get into some Xenoblade Three spoilers. But remember what's been said about 
why the Mobius exists and the will of the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it could also be that Alvis is simply following that. I think that's pretty much. Which is yeah. very yeah. consistent with how he's acted before. True. It really is. What would have been more interesting is that. <coughs> well, here's the thing. I have this a, might... I haven't thought on that, but. Well, oh, well, well, here's a, well, here's the thing. This. It's, it's not necessarily that it'll be more interesting than Zed. This might give more context for Zed. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. That, that's more the lines I'm going along. So that's why this is going to be a very interesting DLC. <laughs> yeah. It will be. It will really be. Like, I, I cannot wait to play this. I'm just, like, so excited. Yeah, and we don't know when it's coming out, but with those leaks maybe that's a i mean if they've got like cutscene names and location names and all that already in there i mean there, it's four it's wave four and these waves have been, it feels like they've been coming out fast to me i don't know yeah they, they've they been coming out much yeah. faster than but i think they originally they'll probably want them. to they'll probably want to flesh it out completely before releasing it so i don't know it, it could still be like sometime like maybe a few months but We'll see. <laughs> oh yeah, it, but it's it sounds like maybe it's farther along than we realize. But we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> that should be the end. Um, actually, I wanted to bring something up that I've just been holding uh-huh. on to. But uh, those Xenogears tracks for uh, Final Bar Line. They I are too. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, they're Awakening, Blazing Nights, and Soaring, and they release on September twentieth for two dollars and forty nine cents USD. I imagine. So, so cool. I to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, um, I believe that's everything then. Um, so. What do you guys think of the news? I'm talking to the audience, sorry. Uh, um, let us know. <laughs> well, um, I think, my own, that's what. I we, think we've... that Nintendo Directs need to get a a different some different announcers so that not everything they announce sounds really goofy even when they're trying to be serious. <laughs> no, I think they should keep it the way it is. It, it, I, I, it's I'm kidding, vibe. don't worry. <laughs> that was a really good Nintendo Direct. It was a great uh, Nintendo. Right. I liked it. Yeah. Well, if you have any comments or suggestions, you can uh, email us or tweet us at Zenochat Podcast, and we'll post we post some things on Instagram sometimes. Post on our MySpace. Uh, aim. I don't um, have that yet, but I'll, I'll yeah. add it to the list. <laughs> I'll add it to the list. Um, yeah, well, thanks for joining me tonight, everybody, and uh, have a good night. Bye bye. Take care. the game stop oh it's not letting me stop oh god why is it not letting me stop failed to stop oh. recording oh no it's stuck in the recording forever oh, we're, we're, we're stuck in the recording. recording give up you can't escape